Hi, this is Jesse. In the last video, I showed you how to get started building a PhoneGap application for Windows Phone using the template. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper and I'm going to show you how to do the same thing from the source code. If we look a little bit closer at our project structure here, we can see that there's a folder called GapLib. Inside this GapLib, there's a DLL which actually contains the source code for all of PhoneGap. Inside references, we can see that there's a reference to this library. Because we want to actually build from the source, what we're going to do here is we're going to remove this reference and we can go ahead and delete this DLL. Next, we can select the solution and we'll go add existing project and we'll navigate to where we've downloaded the phone gap code. In my case, it's repos, GitHub, callback Windows phone. Inside the framework folder here, we have a Windows phone seven gap class lib project. This is the exact same project that was used to build that DLL that's packaged in the template. Now we need to re-add the reference to the phone gap lib. So we'll select our application project and we'll go add reference, we'll select projects, and we'll select the library project. From here we should be able to build for the emulator. And we're back up and running actually using the library project directly. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, well, why would I want to do this? This seems more complicated. And you're right. The problem is that when you submit your application to the marketplace, Microsoft runs a static analyzer over your application and determines what permissions your application uses. In the case of a PhoneGap application, because we're linked to a binary that includes all of these APIs, we're essentially asking for every single permission. These permissions are all displayed to the user, so this might be a determining factor in whether or not they download and install your application. Th this application is Colin Eberhardt's Property Finder UK, and this is the first known PhoneGap Windows Phone 7 application in the marketplace. In Colin's blog, he details about some of the restrictions of the static analyzer, and you can see that his listing here includes every single API required by PhoneGap. However, if you look at his application, you know that he's not using contacts, he's not using the any of the media elements. In fact, most of these APIs he's not even using, but still they're listed here. So I'll explain how we can work around this. So back in Visual Studio here, I'm going to remove this library and the reference is gone. Now I'm going to add an existing project. Also in this framework folder is a Windows Phone 7 Gap class lib bear. This includes just the minimum phone gap API calls and commands to actually get your application running. So if I add that and I go back and I add a reference, and I should still be able to build and run without a problem. Now I have a much lighter version of PhoneGap included in my application. Now let's look at how we can add functionality back in as we need it. So I've added an image element to the document with a, an ID of my image. I've added a call to camera get picture and I have a callback for success and fail. Now if I run this it should fail because we haven't actually included the camera code. So yeah we see 
our on fail handler has been called and it's telling us that the class was not found. This is also displayed in the output in Visual Studio, so it says unable to locate command camera. So now we'll go about adding the camera code back in. I'm going to add the camera in the plugins folder. So if I select it in the project and I go add existing item, if I navigate to where I've downloaded PhoneGap inside the framework folder, I'll see a PhoneGap folder which has a commands folder. This includes each individual API and I'm going to select the camera. And in this case, instead of actually copying it to my project, I'm just going to add a link so that this is still in the library. And if I run in this case, I should see the camera pop up. Now we see the camera interface and I can choose to take a picture. I'll accept it. And the picture is in the DOM. Now I'm going to resize this so we can actually see what it looks like. So you can see that one by one we can actually add just the APIs that we need and therefore we only require the permissions that we actually need to build our application. That's it for this time. As always, stay tuned to PhoneGap.com for the latest happenings in the PhoneGap world. Uh, you can also have a look at my blog at risingj.com. I blog frequently about PhoneGap specifically for Windows Phone. Cheers.